is VOA News. I'm David Byrd. Germans mark the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall on Saturday. AP's Charles de la Desma reports. The 1989 protests and a stream of people fleeing East Germany piled pressure on the country's communist government to open its borders to the West and ultimately end the nation's post-war division. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, speaking at a memorial service in a small chapel near where the wall once stood, said no wall that keeps people out and restricts freedom is so high or so wide that it can't be broken down. She reminded that the fight for freedom worldwide isn't over yet. I'm Charles de la Desma. Medical and security officials in Iraq say that at least six anti-government protesters were killed by security forces and more than 100 others wounded on Saturday in Baghdad. We get more from Edward Uranian in Cairo. Amateur video showed Iraqi security forces driving crowds of hundreds of mostly young protesters off three key Baghdad bridges Saturday as they fired volleys of tear gas to push them back. Young men wearing surgical masks and headscarves to cover their faces skirmished with security forces on several major thoroughfares. The advance of security forces in Baghdad coincided with reports of a political agreement among top Shiite parties to support the government of Prime Minister Adil Abdel Mahdi in return for political reforms. Meanwhile, Iraqi security forces fired tear gas overnight to disperse protesters camped out in front of government headquarters in the southern port city of Basra. Edward Uranian for VOA News, Cairo. For more on these stories, be sure to log on to our website, voanews.com. This is VOA News. Hong Kong protesters held a vigil for martyrs on Saturday night after a student died in a hospital this week following a high fall. As Reuters' Emer McCarthy reports, it's fueled anger among pro-democracy demonstrators who first took to the streets in June. The lights from thousands of cell phones lit up Hong Kong's Tamar Park on Saturday night as protesters held a vigil for who they call martyrs. It comes after 22-year-old university student Cho Si Luk died in hospital this week following a high fall from a multi-storey park during a protest. Although we feel uh, sad, we need to uh, continue our movement. So um, we need to gather together and uh, hear and uh, voice out something to the government and to the police force. Protesters secured rare permission from the police to hold the evening rally. That's Reuters correspondent Emer McCarthy. India's Supreme Court on Saturday awarded a bitterly contested religious site to Hindus, defeat, dealing a defeat, that is, to Muslims who also laid claim to the land that has sparked some of the country's bloodiest riots since independence. Reuters correspondent Lauren Anthony has more. The decision paves the way for the construction of a Hindu temple in the northern town on the site of a ruined mosque, destroyed by a Hindu mob in 1992. A proposal Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling Hindu Nationalist Party has long supported. In light of the result, Modi appealed for peace. There should not be any place for fear, bitterness and negativity in new India. The message of today is of uniting, is to unite and is of living together. Representatives of the Muslim group involved in the case criticised the judgment as unfair and said it was likely to seek a review of the verdict. Republican members of the U.S. House of Representatives have submitted a list of witnesses they want to testify in the Democratic-led House impeachment inquiry against President Donald Trump. Ben Thomas of AP has more. GOP members of the committees conducting the hearings have released a list of at least eight people they want to hear from, among them former Vice President Joe Biden's son, Hunter, and the anonymous whistleblower. But Republicans need the committee's approval to summon their witnesses, and Democrats are in the majority. Chairman Adam Schiff offered a quick response, saying he won't let the hearings serve as a vehicle to conduct sham investigations into the Bidens or the 2016 election. Nor will he let the hearings aid what he calls Trump's effort to threaten, intimidate, and retaliate against the whistleblower. Ben Thomas, Washington.